says um, redwoods will be extinct in the future, and actually they're extinct now. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, and then you make policy decisions on this, and you go give talks, and people get freaked out. My take home on this is that we, we don't know these organisms. We have no idea what's going to go on. We, you can't know your, I don't believe any of us really know ourselves or our wives and husbands. And we're not going to know these living creatures, which are incredibly diverse, and not even one species. Often when you look at it, you'll be like, oh, that's not a species, that's 12, and they're not actually related. Um, and so take it with a grain of salt. Bulldozers are still the number one enemy. So if you bulldoze it, there's a good chance it's going to go extinct. But these things have a resilience against climate change that, that, is, that gives us a lot of opportunity to save them. And so this little redwood seedling, I think it might be the only redwood seedling, the only patch of redwood seedlings I've ever seen in my life. Having worked in redwoods for 10 years, you never see redwood seedlings. That's growing across the street from a redwood tree in Sacramento, down the street from the CPS office, half a block in a bed of simulated redwood understory, in a planter box in Sacramento where redwoods don't occur naturally. Yeah. But we've got a lot of really big, beautiful redwoods living off groundwater. And they're not as happy as they would be in you know, Southern Oregon. But in 500 years, um, there might be a decade that feels like Southern Oregon, and they might proliferate more. And all I know is that they're proliferating now just with like, you know, the overwatering that people do of their ornamental strawberries. And so there is a lot of reason for hope. Um, not complacency, but we can do anything, and if we put our shoulders to this, we can do this. And I, I, I just want to, you know, this is what this chunk of Audubon Canyon Ranch looked like a million years ago. And that's what it's going to look like a million years from now. This, you know, life will proliferate. It will, you know, it will recover the land. New forms will evolve. So long as we don't Venus the place, that's the arc of life. And the only question is, what do we get to experience of it? And I think all of us in this room would rather experience this kind of landscape than, um, you know, than the default. And I just want to end with, you know, the, you know, the blue marble picture. Um, future generations will look and go, oh my God, they had a lot of ice. Um, but it'll still be a good planet. And really, this is, this is the prize. As we talk about doing these things, we talk about saving life on planet Earth. We talk about saving the only life that we know to exist in the universe. And we need to keep that in mind and be willing to sacrifice some parking spaces or sacrifice a little bit of density downtown or make some little personal sacrifices like that in order to save this. Because it's not... It's not about winning an argument with a neighbor or someone on the other side of the political fence. This is what it's about. That's what I'm looking for anyway. So um, love to connect with you, uh, get in touch.